In this episode of Super Sacento, it's showtime. Well, nearly anyway. Hello, you lot. Miller Corner here, and welcome back to Super Seicento. It's baking hot, you'll forgive me for not doing my hair. There is not a chance it would stand up in this heat, so let's move on. Festival Italia is looming fast. In fact, by the time you see this video, because the next two videos of mine are going to be out of sequence, it will be in just two days' time. And because that's the first car show that the Super Seicento is going to have been to in over a year, I want this car looking its best when it's on display at the show. We're going to start today's improvements with something that the comments section was only too keen to tell me to do when we did the rear seat delete. It's very rare that I listen to what anyone says about what to do to my own car because at the end of the day it's your car, do what you want. But in fact as I film this the rear seat delete video was released yesterday and already the most prominent comment is you need to sound deaden and carpet your rear arches and indeed you are absolutely right people in the comments section I was already planning to do that because that's what I'm doing in this video. The first thing we need to do is remove the rear rear seat delete panel which because we took the time to design it so well lifts out like an absolute honey and we can then do this et voila. Now that's out you can see what we've got to cover so when I did the original sound editing episode I used everything I could from that box of I think 30 square meters or something that I bought and it got me right up pretty much to where the edge of the rear seats when they were here went up to. Now they're not here anymore we've got about a quarter of the car and the rear arches not covered at all and in fact as we said before these are two of the biggest areas for vibration and noise and in fact that's going to be bloody noisy when you're up doing 70 exactly 70 miles an hour. So today we're going to be sound deadening all of this rear area before we then carpet over it to neaten it up, ready for the show. Always carry plenty of tools with you. I've got a jack, I've got a wheel brace, I've got a spare bottle of coolant, that's not squash, that's coolant. I've got oil, always travel with supplies if you own an old car, people. Breakdown covers are well and good, but if you can fix it at the side of the road, it might save you a long old wait. As I said in the original sound deadening episode, the first thing you need to do if you are gonna be sticking sound deadening on is make sure your surface is clean because if it's not much like anything sticky, it's not gonna stick very well. <laughs> Right, so we've cleaned this place out and for reference before we start the sound deadening, this is what the spare wheel well sounds like without any sound deadening in it. And this is what one of the rear arches sounds like without any deadening in it. Let's see how much of that improves. Once again, I've gone for Dodo Dead Mat. I'm not sponsored by them, but I used it last time and it did what we can see to be a cracking job. So I've got 20 square meters of this stuff. I'm no way in hell gonna need it to cover all this, but it's better to have too much than too little. And we already know how to do it. So without further ado, let's just have a time lapse of covering all of this over. There will be people that will ask why I put screws in the front bit. This is why, because occasionally you need to get stuff out. Right, remainder of the sound deadening is finally done. The arches are done, the floors are done, the spare wheel well is done, and we did say we'd do it for reference, so let's cut to what it sounded like before. And this is what it sounds like now. That is a marked improvement, and again, it's good when you're standing still, it's gonna be even better when you're going along at 70 miles an hour. Exactly, it's gonna make it so much nicer to use. Next, it's time to carpet those rear arches to match the rear seat delete. After measuring roughly the size of the arch itself, we then translate the dimensions to carpet. I'm using specific camper van carpet this time, which is designed to stretch over complex shapes and thus is better suited to covering curvy wheel arches. After cutting the rough shape, we check the fitment and then remove any trim or brackets getting in the way of where the carpet's gonna go. 
With the outline masked out, spray adhesive gets applied to the arch itself and to the underside of the carpet before the two get pressed together. We start at the back and stretch the carpet forwards, carefully pressing down into all the curves and shapes. With the glue drying, we have to work relatively quickly, but eventually it's stretched into place and then cut more neatly to fit. With the arches done, it's then time to carpet the back of the boot, cutting two rectangular sections of carpet to size before spraying more adhesive on the panel and the carpet, shaping them together and then neatly trimming it. We tuck the boot rubber over the edge of the carpet to make the finish as neat as possible. You'll see the final result later, but already it looks awesome. Right, the next thing to sort, by the way, oh, how good does that BMW Black Sapphire look in the sun? Looks gorgeous. But no, the next thing to sort is going to be the door cards. Now, the eagle eyed amongst you will note that these aren't standard. Indeed, long term viewers will know that about 18 months ago, we re trimmed these in this lovely black quilted leather stuff. And the problem is, they've never quite lived up to expectations. Not in how they look, I still think they look incredible, but in how they fit. You might notice they don't actually fit in the door. They're sitting about an eighth of an inch proud of where the original door cards would have fitted in. And the reason for that is very simple. Underneath this material is some foam to kind of pad it out and make it more comfortable to lean against. Now the material that I've put over the top of it is considerably thicker than the horrible grey vinyl stuff that Fiat put on from the factory. As a result the whole combination is thicker but I'm using the same size clips so it can't seat in as deeply as it would if the material on top of the foam was thinner. So the plan is we're going to pull these off, take the foam out to make the whole package thinner and then clip it back in and hopefully it's going to fit a bit flusher. Now I could show you taking it off but we have done it 400 times before so instead I'm invoking the power of the YouTuber snap. I swear before I started doing YouTube videos I wasn't able to do that. Anyway we've got one of the door cards here and as you can see it's door card and it's held in by all of these little plastic trim clips that slot into the back of it and clip in place and never come out or break or kill you or both. There is a thin layer of foam underneath and I think that extra bit of padding on top of this material being thicker than the standard stuff is what's stopping a flush fitment. Also, it's been about 18 months since we did this, and frankly, some of the corners need a bit of tidying up. So let's kill two birds with one stone and actually get this looking good, shall we? Right, how easy is this gonna be, do we reckon? Appears to be surprisingly easy because this foam isn't the most adhesive material known to man, and as a result, these never really stuck to it that well anyway because it's okay to learn from your mistakes and go I like the result but it could be done better which is exactly what we're doing here right that is off and now we need to get all this foam crap off because I think this has been the source of our British Leyland-esque fitment shall we say <laughs> With the foam stripped and the door cards cleaned, they and the vinyl are covered with spray adhesive and pressed tightly back together before being weighed down and left overnight to dry. With that done, here's a tiny little fix that will make all the difference. These stickers. Now these are on pretty much all cars of a certain age and it's just for the manufacturer to tell you that it's linked, well apparently, to the International Security Register and 24 hour owner and mileage checking service. I don't care. So we'll get rid of these to make it look better. Thankfully, it's a really, really easy thing to rectify. Peel it off, bit of thinners to clear the remaining glue off, and then you've got a clean window. So cue the time lapse and I'll show you. There you go, 30 seconds, instant improvement. Do it. Well, we've gone more than 15 minutes without painting something on this channel, so now it's time for another episode of Joe Paints Random Stuff. Joe Paints Random Stuff. Do do do. And on this episode of Joe Paints Random Stuff, we've got the rear door cards from the Super Seicento, because now that we've got the black carpet, the black rear seat delete, and ever more black creeping into the interior, this horrible, ugly, 90-spec grey is not going to cut it anymore. It looks out of place. So first things first, I'll pop the ashtray out of this one. I'm going to flatten them down by doing this. I appreciate that it may look no different on camera because of the weird lighting in here. And now it's going to be time to paint them. And in tune with what we've done in the front of the interior, we are going to be using that gorgeous BMW Black Sapphire paint. I love this colour. It's just gorgeous. It's a really nice black, loads of metallic flake in it. Looks incredible. Before we get on to that, we need some plastic primer on here, then paint and then lacquer, obviously. So as is usual on Joe Paint's random stuff, cue the montage.
The next day, the slimmer door cards are clipped back on, and the rear door cards and rear seat delete panels reattached. With everything put back together, we are done. There we have it, sound editing complete, rear arches carpeted, rear door cards painted, rear of the boot bit carpeted, and stupid security stickers removed. The Super Seicento is now ready for Festival Italia 2020. By the time you see this, it will have already happened. So next week's video will be the full Festival Italia 2020 video, and then it's back to the mods on this little nugget. So good to have it back. But for now, thanks very much for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. Catch you soon and have a good one.